Hello Aces and most importantly members of the Protocarcha. It's time for a review but unlike my previous reviews I'm not gonna be talking about a video game or a movie or maybe an anime. This time I want to talk about a book which is the Robotech Visual Archive of the Macro Saga. Now before I dive into my review or show you the contents of this book I actually want to talk a little bit about some, some information uh, regarding this uh, book, which is fairly new. It was released on December 19th of 2017, and it has 248 pages, and as you can guess by the name, it's more on the visual aspect of the book. Now, one very important thing to mention, that like the title says, it's Robotech. So it's the American version of the Macro Saga. Now, personally, I like the original Japanese version better, but it's good to have like one book about the lore and the contents that is written in English, even though it's the Americanized version, because there are a few differences between the original Japanese and the American version. With that said, let's dive in into the contents of this book. So one of the things I want to start talking about is the format of the, of the book. I really enjoyed the cover and most importantly, it's hardcover. It feels good when you touch this book and I love when, you know, gaming companies make these books about lore or, you know, anime companies when they are hardcover. It just feels great to touch it and nice design of, of the cover and it has a little bit some of, of art in the back. Now, let's take a little bit of a look inside. So I want to start first by showing you the table of contents so you know what you're going to get in the book. And then we can go from there. I'll be showing a little bit of each section. So Robotech Visual Archive on the Macro Saga. And one other thing that the paper is on the glossy type. I hope you can see from the, the video it has a little bit of a reflection. If the paper feels good, so that's another plus for the book. So here you go, here's the index. First we have the episode guide, then we have character design divided by uh, humans and the Zendradi. And as you can see in the names here, these are the American names. Now, personally, I prefer the original Japanese names. But like Rick Hunter, like who's that? I prefer Hikaruichi Jo. And f according to the, and all the other characters. Same for the Zendradi. After that, we also have the mecha designs, including, you know, the United Earth Forces, and also we have some more information on this entire forces. Now, they include both spaceships, as you can see in the list here, and also the smaller mecha, like the fighters, like the Valkyries, and so on. Same for this entire, including the spaceships and the battle pods. Later in the book, we also have the production art of macros, including environments and locations, objects, the character keyframe art, storyboards, and lastly we have some history talking about the anime in general and some interviews with some people that work doing the original series both in, in Japan and also in the adaptation to North America. Now, there's a little bit of a foreword and this book is full of a really good uh, artwork as you can see here, high quality. It makes me really happy. This makes me almost cry, except you can't see right now. So the first part of the, the book consists on the episode guide. So it's basically a summary of the story of uh, Macross or Robotech, if you want to be more precise. Then again, this is the American version. So there are some differences with the Japanese and American. And this talks only about the American. Now, it's a good thing that they do reference the Japanese versions. So you can see the episode number one, uh, Booby Trap, has the original air date in North America, which is March 4th. But it does have a reference to the original Japanese one, as you can see here. Booby Trap, original air date in Japan in 1982. And it has the writer and director of the episodes. They have a, a short synopsis on each episode, so it's a good way for you to catch up or if it's for introduce someone to macros and some of you know the screenshots for each episode the first episodes they are more descriptive because you need to explain the whole uh, universe of macros and all of that 
But later on, as you go, and there's one page pretty much for every episode. But as you go on, they're going to get smaller and smaller. Especially when in the episode that's just about a recap, such as episode 14. And it just makes me angry that how they translated the names they adapted. That's just a personal thing. Like, Glovo? Who's Glovo? It's Globo! Right? So you have that little bit of introduction, including all the 36 episodes. There you go. Here's the last one. Well, before we get to that. And boom. That's the first section of the book. Just the synopsis of each episode. Now, let's go for part number two. Which talks about the character designs of the humans. So first and foremost, we have, of course, Hikaru Ichijo. Or also known as Rick Hunter. You get to see lots of artwork detail. Most importantly for me is the data. So the called the vital. So birth date or the year, height, color of the eyes, gender, weight, and hair, and Japanese name, which is the original and the one I prefer. Also more more um, interesting, at least for me, my uh, my opinion. It's, uh, you can see the human size comparison. And look, fucker, he is 2 meters and 16 centimeters. That guy is just huge compared to Hikaru, which is 175. Now, of course, there's some a little bit about his profile and more about his artwork. Personally, I'm not too interested on the character design or the visual aspects of the character. Some of the uniforms are a good thing, but you get the idea. Now, let's jump... For Lin Min Mei, because she is a very controversial, controversial character, loved by many, but me, I kind of love her and hate her at the same time. There's actually a lot of Min Mei, a lot of content about her. I'm already skipping many pages, even her naked on the back. I might get censored on YouTube, but you get the idea. And one of the things, one of the most important things I discovered in this book is that Min Mei, she's 158 and weights 47 kilograms. Now, if you compare her to Li Misa, she's 168 and 45 kilograms, which means she's skinnier than Min Mei. Is that one of the reasons why Hikaru chose her? Maybe. That's a big revelation for me, at least. So now that you've seen, there's all there's the main characters such as Misa, Hikaru. There's too much about Mimei actually. Maybe it's overdone. And you also get uh, some designs of some of the background characters, such such, such as uh, Misa's father and other you know minor characters that you see around the show. Now you have the additional military personnel and the drawings and even some little kids so now let's go talk about the Zentradi in the character design section so it's almost the same thing you get the information such as the gender the height which is very important uh, at least for the Zentradi because they're just giant and the names in the original Japanese now I prefer the names in Japanese because I, I can pronounce them better and I don't like how they changed some of the names in English but here's the thing. So here's for uh, Brita. You can see a comparison of this, uh, his size, Exodol, and Kamujin compared to an average human. That's how big we are. And a Valkyrie. So it's almost the same size. This is one of the most important things, at least for me, is the size comparisons. That comes in handy for me. And you can see that more on the other Zendradi characters. Has a little bit of profile and some of the data. Of course, the humans have a more complete data, but that's it. And some of the data for like some of the like the supreme commander of the Zendari isn't that complete. So there's only like name, uh, hair, color, and Japanese name. Now let's jump back to the next section, where we it's my favorite section, of course. That is the reason why I bought this book, which is the United Earth Forces, like the Mecha designs. And the reason why I bought this book, I want to get the data. I want the information, the lore. So, of course, we couldn't start with another uh, vessel other than Macros itself. So, lots of profiles. Most important 
for me specifications including the class the crew divided by uh, you know crewmen pilots air groups troops length width height mass range and armament which at least for me is really important the reason why i bought this book is to get that content to make lore videos about macros so at least that was my priority and there's also of course more art artwork with a description of the macros and like inside the bridge section shots from the outside and you get the idea at least for the macros since it's the main the main vessel of the entire show there's a lots of information about it so more on the different firing modes more detail on the radar tower and so on now you can also find information of course on other units such as the valkyries you have the crew the height it has specifications for the different forms that it can take place such as the fighter mode or the robot mode and the armaments so very interesting stuff artwork i love it and it shows i like when they have these profile views such as the rear view the side view the front view and so on now there's a couple of different arts on them as you can see in here even the ejection seat uh, some of these, um, you might find some Japanese uh, written notes on some of these uh, specifications not that were not translated to, to English. So, of course, given that the, the Valkyrie is one of the main mechas in the game, there is more uh, detail on that. However, there's also detail on some other minor uh, vehicles, such as the Destroids which are like the little robots there in the background. They're not as important in the show, but they're still there. Again, you also get some armament and specifications about them. And in the very last section of the mecha designs, we get some of the supporting vehicles, such as the Dragon, the Avenger, the ones you, they are not that important. And you don't get any specifications, don't expect those, you just get some of the artwork. And if you're lucky, you might be able to understand some of the Japanese that's written, say, for example, right here. But it's very hard to, to read, and you would need to have you need to have that knowledge of Japanese. And so more support aircraft, both space, you know, assets such as uh, uh, Hikaru's biplane from his flashbacks, and so on. You also have cars that you see in the background. Now. Another important section is the mecha designs of the Zendradi forces, which is again one of the things I'm interested. In. So you have the different classes of battleships or command ships. Then again, just like for the Earth forces, you also have your specifications, armaments, and at least for me, this one is really important because it's the size comparison between some of these spaceships. And you can see it's very, very hard to see. It's very small, but it says 4,000 meters, 3,000 meters something, 3,000 meters something. You have the Macross right here. That's the Macross. Then again, I have some basic knowledge of Japanese, so that helps me on some of these uh, little uh, illustrations. And uh, a little bit of a uh, profile on them. The exterior some some of them have the interior given that this one is one of the mains because uh britai was was the commander of this ship in particular so there's more information on it and then some more specs from the and, and, and artwork from the inside now if we go uh proceeding there are gonna be also more specifications on other space vehicles from the zentradi such as um there's this one i think it's from kamujin this one is you can actually divide them into two here's the combined and then you can divide into the front and the back so that's uh, one of the interesting things now if you keep on going some of them are not going to have data or profiles on them this is going to be the artwork these are the minor vessels i still wish there was more information about them but unfortunately there isn't now uh, there's also the for the smaller vehicles such as the enemy battle pods so for example the the regout battle pod sorry because my central is not that good my pronunciation but you still get the information then again the more popular in the show the more information you get such as the specs the armaments and more views on the artwork 
Then you also have the different variants that they had, such as, for example, the Seraghaug, the Glughaug, or the Quell, and so on. And you also have other support units for the Zendradi that don't show up too much, but they are there, such as the Glaug. And the list goes on and on. You can also see sometimes they do have the they do have their armor. I kind of forgot to show, but there's one where the on the characters. I don't want to go back too much, but if you go on the Zendradi section on the characters, I think uh, you're gonna see some of their uniforms and I think some of their armor as well, such as the Zendradi, the battle armor. Because they are so giant, they don't even eat some of the battle pots sometimes. Now, with that said, let's go now take a look at the last part of the game. No, not the game. The, the book, which is the production art for, for the series. So, you can see some more about the environments and locations. Personally, again, I'm not too interested in that. I'm more interested in the mecha design and specifications. But if you're interested in this kind of stuff, it's there. So it has the Yokohama Chinatown, inside the Chinese restaurant or the Nyan Nyan, the Macros Island, and so on. Stuff both inside Macros itself and outside of it. There's also some objects, so some of the assets, some stuff that shows up in, in the anime. Minor details. Objects. Character... Uh, Keyframe art similar to what we've seen in the be the beginning of the of the book with some of these characters, but more on the I think practical side of things. Of course, so let's now go to the next section, which is the storyboards. They are very small that you can barely read. There's too many of them, and they're very small. That's the one thing I did not like. Even though I'm not too much into that, they are so tiny, you can't barely read or see them. They are, however, divided in into episodes. But it's mostly, I think, some only some episodes, such as episode uh, 13, so is a cutoff point. So that's one of the things I wish they had made it a little bit larger, because you, you can't really appreciate the art, because it's so small. And lastly, we have the flashback section filled with some really good artwork. Then again, it makes me almost cry because it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Look at this. And it talks about the origins of Robotech on how it was brought to the United States as an adaptation of Macros. It explains why the anime wasn't brought as macros but rather uh, in a different format as robotech and why it was incorporated with different animes to come into the american market and tells a story about uh, carl mayak i hope that i pronounced his name correctly on how he had the idea of bringing the show with the almost almost the original story with as few adaptations as he needed so people in america could enjoy the show and again, more artwork, really good. Gives you also an, an overall idea of the anime industry at that time and, you know, bringing animes into America and how hard it was. And more beautiful artwork. Like, look at this. This this, this deserves a, a picture frame on my wall. And more stuff. Lastly, there's also a re, a interview with Noburu Ishiguro. He was the director of Macross at the time. This this interview is actually from 2001. Uh, I think it was in a DVD, but now it's it's printed in the book where he talks about you know some of the people who worked in Macross in the anime, such as Shoji Kawamori, one of the designers of the the Valkyrie. He also made a, a, a appearance in Ace Combat Assault Horizon, designing the SFX Shinden. Talks about uh, some of the characters and his experiences in in working and directing Macross. And so this is the end of the book. Nice, overall, a nice job by Udon Entertainment. Very well illustrated, including some data on some of the uh, models and mecha designs. 
So now I hope you guys have a good understanding of what's in the book. Obviously, I can't show every page because what would be the point of buying the book? And they probably would track me down and shoot me down. But here's a couple thoughts that I have about this book. I think it's a very nice addition for Macros fans who are really into the visual aspect of the series, such as the designs or the details or the data of some of the vehicles and maybe characters. Then again, I'm not a huge fan of adaptations on how the names are changed uh, in the English version or the American version. But one of the important things about this book is that it does reference the original work and especially in the end it talks about the story uh, of the series itself, how it was developed. So I thought that was a really major selling point of, of this book. Now as for the story, the synopsis, they are all basically from the American version. There are slight differences between the original Mac, uh, Macross and the Robotech versions. But overall, I think it, it's a really good book. And there are only few of these books I think coming from North America which are adaptations of the Japanese series and I think it's a really good uh, idea that we support when the when companies try to do that bring that knowledge from the lore for here to the North American market otherwise what we're gonna happen is just have the Japanese books for example about the ASFX Shinden from the Ace Combat series which is just in Japanese even though it's a really nice book so I hope that helps uh, that you get an idea on if you should or not buy visually it is an incredible story doesn't talk too much there are some specifications for some of the major vehicles but not all of them the minor ones you just get some artwork which was my main point of buying this book was to get that data so I can do eventually some videos about a Macross lore so now you have an idea I think the suggested price was $45 but I think they dropped to 35 on Amazon which what I bought I think it's a good buy it feels good because it's hardcover, the pa they are glossy pages, I like that, it, it, it's very high quality, it looks good on your bookshelf, not only that, the content is good for the, the visual part, and I think, I hope that you have understood the idea of what this book contains. Myself, I would buy, but of course, you have your own opinions, your own priorities, so at least now you know what's in the book. In the end, I recommend but it's all up to you. So thank you guys for watching. Let, uh, let me know your uh, thoughts about uh, the Robotech uh, visual archive if you have any in the comments. And see you guys next time. Long live the protoculture.